This has been produced by Umunu. Another exciting episode of the Joe Blow Conspiracy Show. I'm your host, Joe Blow. Yes, uh, first part, we shall be discussing 10 reasons why Alex Jones should be tried for treason. Yeah, I gave you like 100, well, 1 million fucking reasons. It's too much to add. And then uh, I get interviewed by Za Popper from uh, Cyber Sage. And, you know, we talk about, you know, my absence and life for the, since last year or for last year. And also the final imploding of consent, you know, with the FBI being involved and all that shit. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I answer a lot of questions y'all might have. And then um, later, uh, exposing the ugly and gay face of Freemasonry within the conspiracy community. I talk about confirmed Freemasons, ex-members of Freemasonry, influenced by Freemasonry, and like, um, it is something that had to be done, you know, we had to get rid of this evil menace. I mean, it's gone too far. And then, uh, what do you call it? And I have a little message about the status of the show. It's kind of sad, but... Oh, well, you know, life goes on. Well, okay, well, let's begin it now, okay? Okay, top 10 reasons why Alex Jones should be tried for treason. The goal of Alex Jones and his Zionist handlers is to get America to destroy itself, herself. This is done through the same way Russia was destroyed under Stalin, dividing and then collapsing society upon itself, by baiting Americans to a violent revolution against their own police and military. Yeah, okay. I mean, after all, can America really afford to be betrayed by Alex Jones? I mean... Alex, while well, Jones can be thanked for waking Americans up to the evils of government, it is the fear that Alex, uh, the fear that Jones may be a part of a greater Zionist plot to destroy America from within. This may be hard to do, but as Patriot got the duty of every American to destroy the Constitution of, to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign, domestic, including Alex Jones. So, the top ten reasons: number one, Stratford intelligence operative. You know, like on February 12, 2012, news broke that Alex Jones was likely an intelligence tool of Stratford, a Zionist intelligence agency located in Austin, Texas. On February 15, 2012, just three days after the original article was published, Jones abruptly canceled the nationwide speaking tour, which he had been promoting since, you know, February 2nd, 
2012. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, Jones is just like insect insecticide, you know, rat poison. 98% of it's like harmless, but like that 2% of that's left will kill you. And that, what that means is Jones will make total sense for a while, but, but when it counts, he'll betray the American people. Reason number two, Operation Endgame. Alex Jones' film Endgame 2007 appears to be a cover for Operation Endgame, a 2003-2012 plan under implementation by the Office of Detention and Removal Operations of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security Bureau of Investigation, Immigration and Customs Enforcement to detain and de uh, deport all removable aliens and suspect terrorists currently living in the United States by 2012. I mean, the term successful terrorist essentially refers to anyone listening to the Alex Jones <laughs> radio show. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, re uh, reason number three, the stochatic, what do you call it? Stochatistic terrorist. Apart from calling for a re violent revolution, but not in those words, Alex Jones is without doubt the greatest stochastic terrorist living today. Stochastic terrorism is the use of, main, uh, use of mass communication, radio, television, movies, videos, internet, to stir up random lone wolves to carry out violent acts of terrorism, which are statistically predictable, but eventually unpredictable. You know, and we've seen a bunch of examples of this. You know, as soon as it happens, Alex Jones says, like, and Alex Jones fan goes crazy. He immediately down out, down out system. Reason number four, the Y2 beta test. You know, during the Y2 scare of 2000, Alex Jones attempted to whip the American people into a frenzy hysteria, subsequent panic after repeatedly led on air that stated that Russia was planning a preemptive nuclear strike <laughs> upon the United States. <laughs> then, you know, it was likely a Zionist beta to see how the American people would react to a war of the world's type of doom doomsday scenario. And, you know, Alex Jones would repeat that shit, you know. He'll, you know, he, he, you know, he does things over and over again. Reason number five, the assassination of William Bill Cooper. After the premeditated and treacherous actions of Alex Jones, December th 31st, 1999, you know, Y2K, Bill Cooper took Jones to task on his radio show and warned that Alex Jones was not a real patriot and his behavior was dangerous to the America. And on the day of 9-11... Cooper repeated his warnings regarding Jones and stated that Alex Jones is a disinformation agent sent to provocateur, uh, provocateur violence in the midst of a national tragedy. And then on November 5th, 2001, less than two months after 9-11, Bill Cooper was assassinated outside of his home. And despite Cooper's death, Alex Jones continues to demonize and libel Cooper every chance he gets. Cooper, while not perfect, was a true American hero and antithesis of Alex Jones. I mean, you know, Cooper, you know, taught people how to decipher news from propaganda, fact from fiction. You know, think for themselves, opposite of Alex Jones. Reason number six, Alex Jones uh, goes coental pro at Austin Gun Rally. You know, remember coental was a series of covert, covert illegal projects converted, done by FBI. You know, and to disrupt, you know, local organizations. And, you know, like, remember there was this gun rally, uh, you know, about, and then Alex Jones, like, on January 21st, 2010, ruined it and accused other people of, like, attacking him, you know, as usual. Such a fucking Jew. I mean, basically, you have to realize this moment. Alex Jones cannot be, tr A, Alex Jones cannot be trusted. B, Alex Jones has alternative motives. And see, Alex Jones is purposely working against not for American patriots. Number th reason number seven, terror predictions. You know, Alex Jones seems to be fed just enough Israeli intelligence via Stratford to make bold predictions a few months, weeks, or days prior to a terror event, and transparency in, in reality. In all document cases, Jones never cares to substantiate his predictions with hard evidence as to why he's making a given prediction, only stating that he knows how the government thinks, and after analyzing the enemy profile, he's able to discern certain events will happen. And as uh, Alex Jones' terror predictions continue to come true, Al Jones looks more and more prophetic, which ultimately gains him more, cre more credibility among his audience. And the fabricated you know, likeness of Jones in a geo 
<laughs> his geopolitical mastermind will then be used to provocateur violence in the midst of a national tragedy, all based on fraudulent information. I mean, I remember, remember 9-11, Norway attacks, um, future assassination of Obama, upcoming bio-terror, uh, that's his new one. And number reason number nine, denial of Zionism. The main job of Alex Jones is to convince people that Zionists do not own and operate the United States of America. This is why uh, Jones has his audience chasing illusionary ghosts such as New World Order, Illuminati, Skull and Bones, Elites, Luciferians, Eugenics, Satanists, Bilderbergers, the Royal Family, Council for Relations, Rockefeller Family, Rothschild Family, the Club of Rome, the World Bank, uh, the United Nations, the Globalists, the Banksters, the Fed, Trilateral Commission, even the Bohemian Grovers. Which one is it, Alex? I'll tell you, it's Jews. <laughs> Zionists are the only group uh, Jones conveniently does not speak out against. Despite uh, Jones stating that he defends the First Amendment uh, and right to free speech, anybody who tries to call him out in for wars to warn his audience about Zionism is immediately cut off and dropped. I mean, like, when you analyze the true power structure of America, you find Zionists everywhere. Um, you know, Jews. Or Jew lovers. And don't forget, he's married to, Alex Jones is married to an uh, Israeli citizen. You know, his wife, uh, Violet. Um, let's see. Reason number nine, the millionaire truther. The Alex Jones Infowar money sucking machine has continued to bilk and drain money from its listeners and fans with repeated money bombs, or, you know, I call it shekel bombs, which are no different than infamous, you know, like Jim and Fa Tammy Faye Baker, the, you know, the televangelist. You know, preachers. And then, you know, numerous money bombs are just used to like, suck up money from all the idiots. I mean, it's just pathetic. And number, reason number 10, the Super Bowl, you know, nuclear terror plot. <laughs> you know, on February 1st, 2011, Julia Assange of WikiLeaks released documents that Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, was on the brink of using a nuclear bomb. And it was going to be a nuclear 9-11. Well, the, but they didn't say, like, when it was going to happen, where it was going to happen. And then, then uh, you know, Alex Jones, of course, you know, he said, like, oh, it's going to be, like, a, a Super Bowl. Because, you know, he's, he's fucking stupid and shit, you know. I, uh, well, conclusion. While Alex Jones, you know, professes to be a loving Christian who cares about humanity, nothing could be further from the truth. Aside from smoking, drinking, cussing, lying... Using illegal drugs and constantly degrading his fellow truthers, Alex Jones is a closet race baiter and blatant fearmonger. Jones, the alleged man of truth, breeds continual fear into his audience, which eventually causes them to be kept in a perpetual state of fight or flight. Or it's fight, fight or fuck. And instead of imparting wisdom on how to make America and the world a better place. Jones preaches a steady, steady diet of negativity and ultimately never raises the consciousness of his le leaders, uh, listeners. In a nutshell, Alex Jones is a divider rather than a uniter. You know, I don't know. We got to feel like get rid of this Alex Jones, man. I mean, Alex Jones, he's run by Alex Jones and America are run by Zionists. Okay, just say Jews and uh, Alex Shabbos Goyim Jones. <laughs> Let's just start doing this, okay? <clears throat> we have a lot of things, important things to discuss. Yeah. You know? yeah. First of all, I'd like to say that um, thank you for. Uh, uh, he's. Uh, I got to tell the people. Um, remember the suggestion I said someone buy Skype credits and then they call me so we can do a show. Well, uh, Zop Hopper is doing it right now. Yes. Um, first, uh, I was saying Swedish first to first, uh, firstly and like uh, forwardly. 
Uh, it makes more sense in Swedish. Um, I, I like, to see, you know, I've been gone like, uh, let's say, since the beginning of the year. I miss all the anti Alex Jones information. <laughs> One thing, so I need you to like tell me everything. One thing I've read recently that if he's been exposed as a Stratford agent, and you know Stratford is like that Zionist secret organization company that does like uh, intelligence uh, analyzing or something, and then like supposedly Alex Jones is, is, uh, works for them. I think is that. I think you, you heard about that. Yeah, I think WikiLeaks uh, got that out, but uh, you know, I I, I kind of tuned off of all the Alex Jones thing there. Uh, I I wanted to uh, mostly know where you are and what happened to you for the last eight months. What what you know? That's that's the most important. I think that's what uh, people want to know. Uh, I like to bad mouth Alex Jones, but I guess that, that's what the people want to tell. Them. Well, um, what do you call it? I've been like, uh, I moved to this new city of Sotatelia. It's the most corrupt and, and basically there's this Assyrian mafia, A-S-S-Y-R-I-N, uh, controls it. It's not really, they don't control it. I found out later. First, I actually believe it. It's actually the local Swedish Freemasons. They use them as like, uh, the Assyrians as, um, gophers, um, like, uh, errand boys. And like, um, what do you call it? So I moved there because I found a job in, Found a lot of fights and stuff, and uh, oh, I should also say it's the toughest place in Sweden. And then uh, I became politically active. I became elected politician. <laughs> what? The, what? Yeah, the hell? I became a oh. politician. No, no joking. And then uh, what do you call it? And I had a lot of little adventures. Like I met Swedish secret police a few times, and <coughs> I tried to get ran into the Russian embassy. <laughs> And, you know, I try to get some help from, like, uh, you know, uh, intelligence people, like a security chief there and all this stuff. Yeah, it was like, um, all the, basically what wait, I got in trouble a, for. Wait was, a minute. Wait a minute. Well, how, how, how did you get mixed up in uh, the, uh, you know, you say you were in politics, but how, how come you're talking about secret police now? How, how did that come about? You know, I'm trying to remember myself. I, what I remember was I used to just try to make phone calls as a politician. I used to make phone calls to all these uh, organizations, law groups, uh, and government agencies. And then I could, there's this big trial going on against Sotatelia. It's called the Sotatelia Network. It, you know, Sotatelia Network uh, trial. That's what they call the Freemason Mafia that runs Sotatelia. And then I got in touch with the prosecutor for it and then like asked for help said oh, you have to wait till summertime and then I'll help you and then like um, uh, just like um, if I tell the truth you're, you're gonna think I'm really crazy but I'm gonna fuck oh well uh, I skipped it oh well, every, uh, everybody tell you the truth uh, it was like my, my stupid uh, computer got bugged and then like uh, so I went to the secret police I was about the first time I went to say hey, can you look at this computer and then I met these two Security, the SAP, SISEX, uh, well, Swedish security police name is Sechets Polisen. Uh, it's uh, abbreviation is SAPO. So I had these two SAPO bosses, and they got all red and scary, scared, like when I brought the computer with me. I was like, take the shit out, clean it for me. And um, then I got a little, that wasn't my only, that was the first time I met them. And uh, because SAPO was running around, sort of, at that time, because it was a big trial, because, you know, like, um, you know, they, you know, just trying to, you know, they, yeah, first I thought they were trying to fight the mafia. And so then later in my adventures, I found out, like, mafia actually works for the secret police as cut, cut out. Like, when the sapo doesn't want to, uh, wants them to do something, like, um, and they don't want to get them, like, and it's not just that it happens in Sweden, it happens everywhere in the world. But I thought, I never thought it would actually be here in Sweden. And, you know, like, they get the mafia to do, like, their dirty work. You know, you remember, like, um, your World War Two. uh, uh, office of Special Operations, CIA's predecessor, used to do the same thing for the Italian Mafia in, um, in, Amer in New York. Well, I have anything. Well, you can ask me some more questions about like what happened. <laughs> well, first of all, now, uh, how come you're 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 not able to uh, just have a microphone on, on your computer? Where are you? I'm in the uh, Casa de los Locos, a uh, crazy house. Oh, well, not really crazy. I was in prison hospital, you could say, but oh. like. Um, okay, but uh, how how did that come about? How how come you're there? I'm first going to say about the microphone. They don't let people have microphones here or video cameras. 
I think they say not to record other patients, but I think it's more like not to record the people who work here because they lie so fucking much. <laughs> I got here because um, I was accused of trying to burn down a house full of Assyrians in the uh, sort of tell you. And I thought it was just an accident. I was smoking while sleeping, and, you know, and shit happens, you know. Oh, what the fuck? Um, what would you call it? Under, and what I call it? During that time, I was getting a lot of stress, and they said, oh, he was, uh, he had a mental condition because he's so much under stress, that's why. So <laughs> I, thought, I talked to some other people, they told me, it's actually, all oh, this is political, and, um, I'm going to be a political, I'm a political prisoner, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is weird. How 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 much time do you still have to, you know, how how long will you be there? Yeah, so it sucks. They, they basically legally forever. But I've been causing so many problems here. I've been calling the police. Uh, I don't know uh, regulatory agencies. I've been um, since I've been here. And uh, what do you call it? Oh, I guess the one thing about so to tell you, everything got really bad for me. The time. The last, I used to always go to the uh, police house like every few times a week to yell at the police until the very last time I met this uh, corrupt police inspector who was like high up in the sort of tell you network it, a network and then like um, I uh, made him cry I was angry so much he almost cried and that's uh, that's how like everything went downhill for me right at that moment uh, I think I have his name somewhere I can't find it here but um, what do you call it and that's uh, the moment where everything got, people really started chasing me around a lot and like, um, it was really fucked up. But, um, yeah, I said I'm in this uh, place and uh, basically I'm hoping to get out like a, a so the area in contact with the Iranian embassy and they came over here and they met, I met the Iranian ambassador with his lawyer and like, um, you know, I had a bunch of political, I didn't ask, hardly asked me that much about my case. That's more of a politics and I told him like, this is what I am. You know, I'm anti-Zionist, and I want to go to Iran to, like, uh, become a journalist. So, you know, and right now he's, he went back to Iran. He's supposed to come back for you in, like, a week to give me some information. Like, he'll help me out. It's like the Department of uh, Foreign Affairs in Iran is uh, deciding whether or not to help me out. Wow. So, uh, so, so, so now... We... Uh, well, did they did they uh, communicate back after the after the uh, after? Yeah, I called them a bunch of times. Yeah, I talked to them a bunch. I'm, right now, I'm just waiting for them to get an answer, to see if you, from Iran, what they're going to help me or not. <laughs> so, so not so you're. What are we going to talk about, Alex Jones? <laughs> no, everybody wants to know what the hell happened. And also, how in in the span of eight months, you say you say you got into politics, but uh, uh, why the why why the big blackout on the internet? Dude, man, I was like a, a super stressed. Like I wasn't like um, it was like James Bond kind of shit. I'm, when I say people were chasing me around, I wasn't kidding. People were chasing me around all the time. It was like, um, it was bizarre, like people breaking into my apartment, I, shit around. I remember, and, you, you know. I remember you telling us uh, that uh, before you before you you disappeared from the net. You were yeah, it was fucked up. And then like, um, I don't know, man, like uh, people like uh, screaming out the windows, and then like I yell back at them, and like people knock on my door, nigger knocking. And like, <laughs> I don't know. It was, and it was extremely messed up. Okay, man. Let me tell you. And there was a lot of things like uh, I still can't even really talk about because I'm going to for Iranians and see what they're going to do. But like, let's just say one word: technology. There is so much technology out there in the world that we have no. You know, everything that we talk about, like conspiracy theory, yeah. just like it. Since I'm with these last two years, everything is confirmed. Yeah. I'm telling you, like, everything is true. We talk about Freemasonry, Mafia, I don't know, secret technology. Um, everything is true. And if you remember, before I got all this fucked up shit, remember I had, like, that little meeting at the Swedish Defense Department? Um, not sure. Uh, but... That was, like, I talked about on a show. And, I'm, like, um, I found out later that's when they chose me. Just at that moment, they wanted to come meet me face to face for. I was like selected to get through all the shit. They used to have like some kind of fucking uh, bait, like some uh, you know, like fishing, you know, like get a worm. 
yeah. to harass like the the mafia. I, didn't, I had no idea, but that's the, it looks like it was the plan all along. Because I was wondering why the hell the Swedish Department for Svartman Defense Department wanted to meet me. It was like you know, yeah, that, <laughs> that was a beautiful. I'm mean, telling the place is beautiful. It was like cool. It was just like that French movie La Femme Nikita, and it didn't look good, but you know it was like a powerful place. You know, remember when she went to training and shit? Yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> like that La Femme Nikita. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, you have no idea. Yeah, now I know it. A lot of things that cleared up for me. Oh, okay. Uh, can we talk about Alex Jones now? So, so forget Alex for now. So, so now are 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 you forced to uh, be medicated or uh, what's up with that? Yeah, that's one thing. Like um, all these motherfuckers here were harassing me, and then like um, I I told them, like I told the doctor, hey, this is fucked up because uh, I forgot to say like I became like a, a leftist politician. And then, like, socialist politician, which not everyone in America is in call me a communist. You know, you're French, you understand the difference of socialism and communism. But, you know, these filthy, dirty Americans don't. Yeah. They're going to say, uh, yeah. they're gonna say they're gonna say Joe Blow's a commie. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm a, bo- a gangster Bolshevik. I'll explain it later. <laughs> like, uh, oh, now they're going to call you Jew for sure. <laughs> <That's> so stupid. <laughs> Jew, no, Jew Blow. <laughs> The Jew blue. <laughs> no, so like uh, I did a lot of. Th- this is uh, so I was like uh, left politics, and there's this big uh, uh, what do you call it? They call Sweden Democratina, Sweden Democrats. They're like this Zionist, uh, nationalistic, uh, neo-Nazi political party. What I used to like fuck around with them all the time, and like problem for me is a lot of these idi- Sweden Democrats working like because uh, they're like uh, stupid people. They're like low class and like um, they work in like shitty jobs, like in uh, crazy houses. Also in jail, I got harassed too by people who work there, just like here by people who work here. And then like um, I was saying, like uh, told the doctor about this shit and said, "Hey, I'm gonna call the police." All this stuff, and she said, "You know, you're having delusions. Put you in medicine." So she did, and I said, "Fuck you, I'm calling the police." And I did, and I called a bunch of other motherfuckers too. And that's when all this. Sh- just right now, you're calling. It's like things become a little bit. Uh, they still hate me, like all the people who, uh, like the Freemasons and Sweden Democrats work here, but they can't do anything to me anymore because like, I caused so much trouble. No, um, no, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, man. I think like talking about me is boring. Can we like say one, uh, talk about some interesting things, man? What the hell else do you want to know? <laughs> well, that, that's, that's pretty much the... the, the... That was su- such a big thing for eight months, man. Everybody, where's Joe Blow? What happened to Joe Blow? And and, and the last comments, you were being followed in in the everywhere in the streets and on the bus, uh, which was true. So, yeah, uh, I'll uh, tell you, can I just say one more thing before we end the Joe Blow comments? I gave two sp- very important, very left. They, everything is discussing. Me, he was the same for my Twitter account, and then like. Um, But then, guess what happened? Last night, that everything got like crazy, too crazy. I wrote two very important tweets. Yeah. I wrote them. I checked them. They were on Twitter. I recently ch- uh, checked them on see my computer from here. Guess what? They were not shown, and they were explained everything. And, that, and I was like, uh, man, that's like some spooky shit right there. Oh, really? You you you, you kind of explained your your uh, what's going on with tweets? Yeah, I had to give two very important tweets at the end. I can't really remember what they were about, but like uh, someone removed Is, them. Uh, with tweets, Both of them. with tweets, you can't say uh, you, you know you, you got so many words you can say it's not a. Big... I put in lots of information. Those two tweets, like about everything, and like basically, I can't remember. I think basically I said like I'm neighbors. If we're part of the Syrian mafia, and we also work for Secret's Police, and then also. Uh, Sweden kills its uh, political dissidents. And, you know, those two, well, they deleted them from Twitter, both of them. And I didn't think that was possible, but oh well, I guess it is. Uh, okay, now, can we t- tell me about Alex Jones? That's who I'm interested in. What has happened since the beginning of the year to Alex Jones? Yeah, man, you, like, you, did, you didn't. Boy, you're, you're not 
talking to the right guy, man. I, I tuned off of Alex Jones. I, I kind of hate his guts. Like, just hearing him makes me want to barf. It's, he just had a shekel bomb. He, like, a few yeah. days straight of bullshit. Yeah, everybody was talking about it, and I didn't even listen to, to uh, anything, a- any of it, because... Uh, It, it, you know, it's I'm I'm just sick of that guy, man. And hey, let's talk about someone who supports him. <laughs> Yiddy. <laughs> okay, I got to tell the background. See, me and Zal Popper, we, uh, well, actually, we met before at this place called Con- Conspiracy Central, Consens, C-O-N-C-E-N dot O-R-G. Yeah. But we all moved, to, the good people moved <laughs> to Cybersage dot net. Yeah. C y b e r s a g e dot n e t run by um and motherfucker goes by too many names I always call him um humbug Jews. humbug and humbug and, and also uh, Waldo Waldo that's how Waldo and Shroom that's what I'm, uh, but it's the, the same fuck. guy he's the, he's the yeah I know he he's like a, a Turkish guy he's stupid uh, um, <laughs> like uh, what do you call he's Canadian that's why I like so is Al Popper that's why they all you know Canadians are just like Jews. <laughs> and Yiddy, Yiddy is Canadian. Yeah. Yiddy is a, his name is Y E T I Yet Yeti, but like I was the first one, not Mammy, to call him Yiddy because he's such a Jew, and like his Jewish, he's always supported Alex Jones. If you write anything bad about Alex Jones, he goes crazy. Yeah, and. He's- There's and no what happened recently? Someone like uh, uh, you got to tell what happened. You you understand it better. Like somebody like got uh, he banned somebody, and then when you try to get his Justin, so what the fuck? Oh yeah, that Ep- Epinoia guy. Oh yeah, that was uh, that was really fucked up because uh, he banned him, and and then uh, well, he tried to uh, to send copyright. Uh, You know, to, he tried to shut down <laughs> Consen, but the only thing that he was able to do was uh, to make Yeti uh, uh, stop using PayPal. Hey, but Yeti wrote on like uh, just recently on the tracker, like on the Cohenson uh, uh, tracker, <laughs> that uh, they're trying to shut down Consen, blah blah blah. And you know, as usual, like the Jew always says, like, "Oh, I was trying to quit Consen." I wanted to give it to other people, uh, you know, to move, blah, 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 you know. Yeah. And uh, he's so full of shit. I mean, like, <laughs> I hope Con... I mean, Con... It's, Con... It's, it should have died a long time. It would die, like, so many deaths. Like, <laughs> little deaths. Not, like, big deaths. Just teeny-weeny. Yeah. Making it all shitty as it is. I mean, yeah. even the track... I mean, there's not even... Kind of, not just coincident. I mean, there's, like... Generally, there's not even more interesting bit turn torrents no, no. I mean because everything's been discussed everything's been known about uh, yeah you know? that's it it's getting old the whole thing is getting old it is I mean like what the hell am I supposed to say now you know like even like Fritz Springer came out finally came out of prison I mean like everything is like uh, it's just boring right now I mean yeah. I, I'm, 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 I almost feel like I'm the most interesting thing right Uh, yeah, yeah. That, people are gonna like this uh, this uh, little interview there. But uh, you know, uh, Mammy, uh, at Gris, you know, at Grism, we we we've kind of put our uh, little energy there. You know, to to give the website address. Yeah, well, just to, to you know, it's like a pastime, uh, and and it, it kind But of. But the address is G R I Z Z O M dot blogspot. Dot com. Yeah. Yeah, so... You, to, you know, when we're talking to people, this is like show advice, you know? You have to, like, give address, you have to give background information when you say something, because not everybody you, you listens to this will know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah, I have a tendency to think that that this is only going to be heard by uh, by people at CyberSage and Consent, but... Uh, No, that, no, 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 lots of people. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh. It goes on the Pirate Bay, eh? You put it on the Pirate Bay, I think? Yes, I do. I put it everywhere, yeah. in lots of, lots of places. Yeah, okay. So, like, um, so, uh, I'm going to take it back. There's not, I actually did learn something new in conspiracy theory recently. Uh, how about you? Before I say, you say, what did you learn recently about conspiracy theory that was new that you had no idea about? Then I'll say mine. Oh, man. That's a good question. What did I learn recently? 
I mean, it seems it seems like it's always repetition and the same thing. Nothing comes to mind now. I'm sure I I learned something, but I, nothing uh, comes to mind right now. I learned recently, uh, like uh, what do you call it? Uh, more of esoterica. Which you know, esoterica these days has been like a lost portion of conspiracy community. Like people are like. You know, they really don't, because, you know, idiots like Michael Tessarian, like, ruined it, you know, uh, he made it, like, all commercialized, but, like, recently I got into, like, uh, you know, studying, like, um, some of the aspects of Gnosticism as it retains to Christian identity, and, like, um, because I forgot a lot, because I was listening to this Christian identity, like, bullshit, like, um, oh, yeah. because, you know, that's, like, the new thing among the patriots is, like, saying they're the, real, the white people really choose. And then, like, um, so I thought it made me go back to Gnosticism, because, and I figured out, these people, at first we used to always say, like, oh, this is just, like, Talmudism for Jew white people, but it's actually, you know, Judaism for white people. No, but it's actually, these people are Gnostics. All their theories are pure Gnosticism. It's not even Talmudic. It's, it's amazing. I mean, like, uh, yeah, it is. I've got to. Uh, if you don't understand you know, just a little bit of Gnosticism, you listen to Christian identity, you're like, oh, uh, Giul that is Giuliani had, uh, what's his name, pa James, uh, what, what's his name there? Christian identity. Eli, yeah, yeah, Eli yeah. November. Yeah, he, yeah, he, 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 he lied James? He lied James, and he destroyed him. Oh man, that was a, that was a, uh, and the next day he 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 bashed him so much that the next day he 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 kind of pretty much apologized for having been so uh, you know so uh, so you know he was really bashing him. So anyway, oh oh, I was going to talk about this shows this interview is going to be included in my show, but one thing I was going to talk about on the show was. This is the Freemasons who are consp uh, on conspiracy community. I'm not saying one right now. We're going to save it for an interview with Ogner, but uh, Ogner's like, uh, I don't know, he's not doing shit. Okay, I'm going to tell you the name of someone who, right now who's a Freemason that you all know. Okay, if I say this name, you better not fucking ask me for proof, because I'm telling you, this is 100%, okay? Joe Balloon, don't lie. You spent all my years of doing this bullshit. Everything I've read, you know I'm not a liar. I don't make up shit about people. Unless it's as a joke and you can know it. You're like, hee 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 ha. Yeah, yeah. Guess, well, who's, a free, guess well, who's a Freemason? Just a minute. You're such a joker that sometimes many people think that that you're bullshitting because sometimes it's hard to, to figure out where you're coming from because of all the, the silly jokes mixed up with the... Uh, it's obvious, Danny. Yeah, name's obvious. Okay, I like giving one hint. This guy's an anti-Zionist uh, radio broadcaster and he's a f super Freemason. Who is it? John Stanmiller? <laughs> I don't nope. know. I have no idea. Daryl Bradford Smith. DBS, oh, oh. I am the witness. Oh. He's a Freemason. <laughs> oh. Well, that... I mean, haven't you always wondered how he, like, gets interviews with certain people? He's always, ZC... You know ZC, how he always hangs... What? ZC, ZCF just did a rant on the 18th about, uh, about him. Uh, dude, let me tell you, man. Dale Braffson is a shitty little Freemason. I mean, you always wonder how you can hang around so many Jews all the time. It's yeah. not just because he's from New York. No, because, like, Freemason cl uh, clubs, you know, lodges are all full of Jews. That's why he sounds like a Jew, because he talks to them all the time. I mean, uh, I mean uh, really, I should I should have figured this out, like, years ago, but... Yeah, Daryl Barton is a Freemason. No, people... And you no, heard people, it here first. People are going to think that th that's a rumor started by you and Ognir because of all the shit that uh, happened. No, Ognir doesn't know about this. I was going to expose on Ognir's show, but, oh, like, oh. you get you have the privilege. Wow. <laughs> first. <laughs> uh, yeah, DBS is a, a gigantic Freemason. I mean, like, um, high degree, not low, low level. I am... I mean, it also explains all this little stuff, like, he says, like, he got, uh, people chasing him spies, how he's always good to uh, go to the local police, um, getting these interviews with people he has no way he could have ever had any, like, uh, communication with, only because of fellow Freemasons, that's the reason they talk to him. I mean, um, not just him, but what's that uh, Spanish guy who's always with him? Um, 
what's his name? Um, uh, yeah. Uh, Second Republic. I don't know. The guy was on Alex Jones' show until he talked about Jews and got kicked off. Uh, uh, that guy's a Freemason, too. He's from Argentina. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, that, that's another one. Both of them. And there's, unfortunately, it breaks my heart to say it, I highly suspect some of the Muslims who are on the show are also Freemasons. So I'm not going to say who they are, but I'm going to give a little message to you all, guys. And first of all, salam alaikum. Um, if you're not a Freemason after I hear this, go to Al Azhar University, University of Cairo, Al Qahira, which is, you know, is the number one Islamic uh, educational uh, institution in the entire world. They wrote so many times, some of the sheikhs, shayukh over there, they said, like, you cannot be a Freemason and a Muslim at the same time. So you can't, like, uh, don't yell and scream at me. Go over there, check them out. If you still that, you're not. I don't consider you Muslim. Okay, and, you know that, that's the joke to those guys who are like going on DBS this show. I mean, it's shocking, man. I mean, it's all this Freemasonry. I, I really fucking hate Dick eating Freemasons. I mean, like especially all this shit that happened to me. I'm really pissed off. I'm gonna write a book about like um, the homosexual origins of Freemasonry. Uh-huh. It's gonna be called Men Are Boon. And uh, what? Uh, I really fucking hate these assholes. You're gonna uh, call it's it's fucking you're gonna, gay, dude. What, yeah. what? You're, you're gonna call it what? Men are booned. What does that mean? Uh, it's a German word. It means um, how do you explain it? It'd be um, the man bound men. Uh, well, let's just say um, not group of men. Um, male groups. And that's a, that's a translation. It's a, it's cool when you write it down. But like um, it, it, male groups, that's, that's like the best translation. I'm gonna write it in like a talk to prove how gay Freemasonry is. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, all these uh, pedophiles and all that uh, who are uh, higher. Isn't it amazing? I know. Isn't it amazing how all this government pedophile rings going to expose right now? Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah, I, uh, it's like I find it weird too that it. That I find it, it very suspicious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it's in the 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 regular media, so it's kind of uh, weird. I mean, recently that one uh, Dutch uh, justice prime uh, justice prime minister he goes to Turkey and like the Turkish people, Turkish people like uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> it's like the guy who runs Cyber Sage. They uh, gave him a bunch of boys to have sex with and they videotaped him at the same time they were blackmailing him. That's the shit like Turkish people like to work out on Cyber Sage too. <laughs> what? what the fuck are you talking about Cyber You didn't hear about that? Turkish, like as if as if Waldo was Turkish or something. Yes, I have to insult Waldo. <laughs> yes, yeah. Come on, man! <laughs> it's his fault. He deserves. He no, he likes. Let me tell you, you know the Waldo. He likes being insulted. <laughs> it's a form of com- it's compliment. You don't know the Turkish mind. Well, well, <laughs> well, you know, he's, he's kind of cool because he, he doesn't uh, bother, any, he lets us do whatever we want and he doesn't, he doesn't, you know. Uh, now the reason he's doing that, you don't have he's the he's opposite. Sex with, he, he's the opposite. He's only because he's, he's, he's having sex with women. Uh, if he, hasn't, if he wasn't the, having sex with women, he'd be an asshole to you. I, I was around when he doesn't have any girlfriends. He, the guy's a total the, dickhead. He's the opposite of Yeti. It's just because you're getting pussy right now. That's the only reason Waldo's being cool. Hey, what do you think Yiddy's, Yiddy's going to do, like, if he loses content? You know, wouldn't that be, like, a gigantic, like, destruction, destroys, uh, you know, give him psychological problems? So next, I'll see Yiddy, I'll come, come out here, I'll see Yiddy walk around the it's, uh, <laughs> crazy house. <laughs> uh, I don't know. He's going to have sex with his new computer or something. I don't know. What yeah. He, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I want to say I'm glad about... I am hate how Canadians do shows always talk about Canada. I'm glad we're not talking about Canada. Uh, that, that really pisses me off. We have, know, also, I don't I, like... I, just, just a minute. We have less than five minutes now. Okay, you. then you, go ahead, man. Say anything you want before we have to finish. Well, no, it's, it's no, it's okay. I'm just telling you that. Uh, okay, but do you have anything to say, man? Like, ask me before we go. Uh, well, well, I was just going to 
tell you that you know I hope you get out soon and that everything thank you, goes, thank you. you know everything goes good for you because that's kind of a bad trip to be in the in a place like that yeah definitely especially like it's so fucked up to like half the patients and half the people work here are gain shit I mean ugh, <laughs> it, 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 it ain't cool like you know you, you know how you always say like oh I don't care about gay people yeah me either until you have to live with them no that's uh, then you, you started like uh, caring about it you know like ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It, it's kind of it, it bothers. It but it doesn't bother us until they they start. Unless you have a gay roommate, that's yeah, that's it. Un, un, until this, when they start hitting on you, then then you don't you know then then it's kind of not cool. <laughs> Well, I'm lucky I'm ugly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Let's, uh, I think this is a good <laughs> moment to end the interview. Yeah. Thank you for giving to me, and like, uh, we'll see each other. Bye-bye. Okay, I'll send you the, the link for the audio there. Cool, man. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> Yes, time to expose the ugly and gay face of Freemasonry within the conspiracy community. First, we're going to go with the confirmed 100% Freemasons. Pretty obvious. Well, most of them. George Nuri and the entire fucking cast of Coast to Coast AM. I mean, they're all ex-military. I mean, all their subject matter is like a disinfo, you know, and... It's pretty fucking obvious, like to anybody with you know Masonic radar, like myself, that that's a that's a the biggest amount of Freemason you'll ever see is just that stupid show. Him, his guests, everyone that works for him. Uh, it's, you know, it's a whole government project, a military project, military psyops. And then uh, we're gonna say Jordan Maxwell. He's not just a Freemason; he's a member of many many secret societies, and like um. You know, you can't trust this motherfucker, you know, he's on the other side, and, he's, I mean, like, everything he's always talked about has always been, like, bullshit, I mean, I ain't gonna go through it, you know, you should already fucking figure it out, it's all been discredited, and, like, even, yeah, even his, uh, shit about law, and, like, um, maritime, the way he talks about maritime law, inter admiral law, is all stupid, it's fucking idiotic, and it's not even true, uh, there's more pe reliable people, and now there's, of course, Daryl Bradford Smith, and a shitload of his guests. I mean, this guy is like scummiest, like type of like person who you know shouldn't join Freemasonry, but did. Man, I don't know how can you be anti-Zionist and a Freemason at the same time? I mean, that makes no fucking sense. I don't know. I just they don't go together. I mean, uh, it's like being anti-Zionist and a Nazi. I mean, what the fuck? Oh, um, I don't get it. Now we're gonna say ex-members of Freemasonry. Unfortunately, Tex Mars, yep, he was ex-military, not just an officer, and like, um, but he repented, and I'm not going to say too much about him, but like, um, he was one, should just go come out and admit it, you know, like, you know, man up and shit. Another one, Dr. Bill Deagle, ex-military, he repented, but he still uses his Masonic connections, that's where he gets all this stupid disinfo from, you know, and a lot of his guests are like, still like, uh, Freemasons and shit, so... I uh, you know, military, also, military guest, Freemason. Always remember, military is like, anybody says ex-military, I should say Freemason right there. It's, it goes always together. Another one is Dr. Stanley Monteith. He repented, but, I mean, he talks against Freemasonry, but he never says because he was one. And then he's still a super Zionist, and all Freemasons are Zionists. I uh, hope Daryl Bracker Smith uh, hears that. I mean, I, it, Freemasonry is Zionism, so for all practice purposes, still a Freemason, in my opinion. Now people who are influenced by Freemasonry, Alex Jones's 
father is a Freemason. And this motherfucker, Alex Jones, he uses his father's Masonic connections. You know, that's how he got into Bohemian Grove. Um, I don't know, like, he finds out about shit and, like, uh, what's that fat old motherfucker who always goes to, uh, you know, like, uh, Bilderberg? That guy's a Freemason, too. I forgot his fucking name. And, you know, it's just, you know, he, he, uh, he didn't become Freemason, but he, he uses it all the time. Yeah, I know he talks shit about Freemason, too. I've heard his shit, but don't matter. He still uses it. And then uh, Jeff Rents, absolutely not a Freemason, but he has a shitload of Masonic guests, and he never calls them on their Freemasonry. Remember, so you remember, like, John Stepmiller, he had Freemasons on the show, and he told them, like, um, fuck you, you're a Freemason. You know, so you got to respect John Stepmiller. And then the Michael Collins Piper, he's surrounded by patriot hearts, Masons. And you know how the Masons, they always talk about the Republic and the fucking Constitution because that was a, the Constitution was a Masonic document. And so you're going to have all these patriot hearts you see on the show, they're going to be Freemasons too. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, I hope I like talking about this. Like, I know I probably left out a lot of people. And um, they should be scared because maybe someone else is going to like pick up why I just started and like kick their fucking ass because they need to be. And we need to get rid of all of the Freemasons from the conspiracy community. That that shit just has to go. It should have been gone a fucking long time ago, but now it's time. We have no more time left. been a pretty good show, hasn't it? Unfortunately, it probably is going to be the very last time. But, you know, I'm sorry. You know, it's like I'm in the crazy house, and it's already fucking hard to do these shows, and the sound quality is not that great. I don't really want to bring you the best, but, you know, I always like to do guest appearances, so, like, um, of course, you know, the setup has to be the people have to call me, because, you know, I got no microphone. So they have to call me on my phone. Uh, what do you call it? Um, I don't know. It was pretty fun. It, it did pretty much fuck up my life, but I think I've had a, quite an influence on people with this, this stupid little show. So, for the maybe last time, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the Jovo Conspiracy Show, and Khodaha says, see you guys, bye bye. Vakti barat na